Soul Flows. What goes wrong as you traverse along life's roads? Insights into life, love and light. Something goes wrong with a child from the birth. And this continues as you traverse along life's road. Every child is born feeling the whole universe within. He is in tune with the universe. Also, he does not know his separation from it. He and the universe exist as one. Really, human life emerges from the universe as part of it. As he traverses along life's roads, slow education and conditionings teach him to feel separate from the existence. We give him a name, an identity, qualities, ambitions and much more. Thus we create a personality around him. Slowly and slowly the personality becomes thicker through upbringing, education, religious teachings and other conditionings. And as the personality becomes thicker, he starts forgetting who he used to be in mother's womb. Personality becomes more important than anything else. In mother's womb, he was not a doctor or an engineer or anything else. There he had no name, no form and no status. There he was not separate from the existence. He was so together with mother and beyond the mother there was nothing. The womb was all, his whole universe, a very tiny experience of the ultimate reality. What happens to the child in mother's womb happens once again when awakening dawns. The whole universe becomes just a womb and nourishes him and he becomes part of this cosmic womb. The child in the mother's womb never worries what will happen tomorrow. He has no money, no bank balance or account, no business, utterly unemployed and no qualifications either. He does not know when the night comes or when day breaks or dawns or when seasons change he simply lives in utter innocence in deep trust that everything will be okay as it has been before if it is okay today it will be okay tomorrow as well but he does not think this way. It is just an intrinsic feeling. Not worse because he does not know words yet. He knows only feelings, moods and is always in a jubilant mood, rejoicing absolute freedom without any responsibility. Why does every child coming out of the womb give so much pain to the mother? Why is every child born crying? If you try to look deeply into these small matters, they will reveal to you a great secret of life. The child resists getting out of the womb because he has, it has been his home for nine months. He does not know any calendar, 
Nine months were almost an eternity, forever, since he has known that he is, he has been in the womb always and always. Now suddenly his home is being taken away from him, he is being thrown out, expelled. He resists with all the might that he has and clings to the womb. That is the problem. The mother wants him to be born sooner because the longer he remains inside, the more pain she has to endure. But the child clings and is always born crying, every child without much exception. Only about one man, Lao Tse, it is said that he was born laughing. It is possible he was an exceptional man, crazy from the very beginning, not knowing exactly what to do. That this is the time to cry. He laughed and he remained that way his whole life, just doing wrong things at wrong times. And the story of his whole life's strangeness begins with laughter. Everybody was shocked because no child has ever done that. When I was born, I did not cry. And when the child does not cry at birth, the child is considered born still. That is dangerous for the mother. The moment child cries at birth, everyone rejoices except the newborn. Such are exceptions. Seeing Lao Tse's whole life, the people who wrote about him must have thought that his beginning could not be the same as everybody else. Instead, it has to be a little crazy. His beginning has to be consistent with his whole life. Perhaps it is only a myth, but even historically it has been he, if he had laughed, it is an exception, not the rule. Why is every child born crying? Because his home is being deserted and his world is destroyed. Suddenly he finds himself in a strange world amidst strange people. And he continues to cry because every day his freedom becomes less and less and his responsibility becomes more and more weighty. Finally, he finds there is no freedom left, but his duties, only duties to be fulfilled. Finally, he finds there is no freedom left out, but only duties to be fulfilled, responsibilities to be carried out. But, and his life becomes a burden. Seeing this with the clarity of the innocent eyes, if he cries, you cannot condemn him. These Psychologists say the search for truth, for God or for paradise is really based on the experience of the child in the womb. He cannot forget it. Even if he forgets, it remains part of his conscious mind and goes on echoing in his unconscious. He is searching again for those beautiful days of total relaxation with no responsibilities and all the freedom of the world available. 
To be responsible, to respond is one thing, and to be responsible is another thing. Both are totally different from one another. To be responsible, to respond, the way it is to be in a particular situation is more important than responsibilities. And there are people who have found it. My word for it is enlightenment. You can choose any word, but basic meaning remains the same. One finds that the whole universe is just like a mother's womb to you. You can trust, you can relax, you can enjoy, and you can sing. You can dance. You have an immortal life and a universal consciousness. What happens to the seeker along the path is exactly a rediscovery of this lost state. It has to happen to every seeker, but no one allows it to happen or continue. People are afraid to relax afraid to trust, afraid to tears, afraid to anything out of ordinary. Out of the mundane they resist and in their resistance they dig out their own grave and never come to ecstatic experiences which is their right. They just have to claim them. I have heard a Jewish man from Los Angeles went to see a psychiatrist. He introduces himself as Napoleon Bonaparte. So what seems to be the problem? asked the doctor. Well, doc, everything's actually everything is great. My army is strong, my palace magnificent, and my country is progressing. My only problem is Josephine, my wife. And this is the situation of almost everyone, not knowing why does it happen, but that is how it goes on and on with everyone. Oh, really? So exclaimed the doctor, and what is her problem? Throwing his hands in, the, in despair, the man says she is thinking she is Mrs. Goldberg. In this state of tensions, anxieties and problems, man feels lost amidst the crowd. He becomes someone else. He knows that he is not the role he is playing. Instead, he is somebody else. This creates tremendous psychological split in him. He cannot play the role correctly because he knows he is not authentic being. And he cannot find his authentic being either. He has to play the role because the role gives him his livelihood, his wife, his children, his power, his respectability and everything else. He cannot risk it all, so he goes on playing the role of Napoleon Bonaparte. Slowly and slowly he starts believing it himself. He has to believe, otherwise he will be in great difficulty to play the part. That is how the life goes on. Enough for now.